Okay, so as you can see here, we are uh, we have Dell Optiplex 5070 and a Dell Optiplex 5070. The difference between these two is this is an i5, this is an i7. Does it say so here? It does. Isn't that nice? There's the i7, there's the i5. Um, we're going to pull these apart just to show you that they're the same inside. Um, uh, as in our previous video, you can see that the... Um, the 5070, the, the newest one we have here, this i7 one, has a, a super speed um, a USB 3. Uh, it has a USB 2, a USB 2 with power, and a USB uh, 3.1 type C connector. Uh, super speed, of course, as well, obviously, with that. And uh, let's look at the back here. Uh, the back has exactly the same stuff. So you get your power supply, a couple of knockouts, network. Uh, two USB 2s, four USB 3s. Uh, in this case, I've opted for the uh, additional um, display port head, a single audio jack, and let's pop the uh, side off. There we go. Just like our other one, you can see there's not much in here. In this case, I accidentally ordered a, a DVD, which I don't want, but it's there, so we'll take it. Uh, just like our 5050, the way you uh, pull a power supply out is to pop out these three screws right here and clip the little uh, blue uh, tab down there and the power supply will just come out. Let's take a look at the actual uh, motherboard. So I'm going to slide this to the left. Uh, to get this out, however, I need to pop the front off and the way you do that is to lift these three clips. Let's go over here so you can see so you're not looking at the back of my arm. There we go. There, and that pulls the front off. Then I can slide that over and lift it up. You know, the wires are stuck a bit back here, but I'll make short work of that. There we go. And there it is. So now um, what you can see in here, just like our other one, you can see we have uh, two uh, PCI Express slots. I have a USB uh, Type-C slot. Well, just a Type-C slot uh, for uh, memory slots. In this case, these are two 16s I'm using, so this is 32 gig. This has uh, um, the uh, two old SATA ports, um, and uh, this is my drive. That is a 256 gig SK Hynix NVMe drive. I'm going to take that out and toss it, and I'm going to replace it with the, this uh, one terabyte um, M2. Uh, and to do that, I need to take the screw out and I need to move the uh, post that it's on, the mounting post from here to here, standoff as it's called in the business. So I'll move the standoff from the motherboard from here to here, which we'll do, and then take this out. And uh, what else is in here that I can show you? There's a uh, card reader expansion uh, slot there. Um, obviously the fan, CPU fan, under there is the i7 CPU, and uh, that's about it. So let's get to work and swap that little SK Hynix disc out. So, well, it's not a disc, it's drive. I'm just going to unscrew it so you get to look pretty much at the back of my hand here. Lay this down and pop that up and out. There it is. And I carelessly dropped the screw in there, which I will pull out because you never, I have never in 25 years lost a screw inside a chassis and this is not gonna be the first uh, day for it. I can remove that standoff with a uh, Phillips screwdriver. Uh, this, however, is just too small. I'm just going to use a slightly larger one. And there it is, just pops out. And I can do it by hand from here. Just pop that out and then move it down to the end. And the reason I'm doing that is because it shipped with a 2230, which is a very, very small 22 by 30 millimeter uh, SSD. And I'm going to replace it with this. Uh, P1 from our good friends at Crucial. Um, very inexpensive quad layer, or not quad layer, quad bit drive. And uh, you can see here, that's it. And let's pop this guy out. It's all just garbage packaging. So I'm just going to take the SSD and VME. Uh, it also is labeled NVMe, which is on the PCI Express bus which will operate at a very rapid speed, um, many times as fast as SATA. And uh, all I have to do is pop it in like I've done, take the little screw from the end and screw it in, and there it is. And that's not actually, of course, required, but if you don't like your drive swapping around, that's a good idea. 
as mentioned, that's a 2280, 22 uh, millimeters by 80 long. This is a uh, this is what shipped with it, the SK Hynix, which is a 22 by 30, smallest uh, possible. I've never seen one like this other than in other Dells, uh, 2230s. So that's it. Let's pop the uh, put it back together, and uh, when we benchmark this, we will find that the write speeds on the SSD that I just put in are twice as fast, literally twice as fast, not exaggerating there, as the one that Dell shipped with its Class 35 SK Hynix SSD. That's not clipped in quite right, so let's just get that in. So we just have to clip that in at the bottom. There we go. And is that in right? And it is. There we go. Let's take the side chassis, pop that on, slide it, And we're done. Okay, so I'm going to power this up. I'm going to image it. And um, what we're going to do with it is then benchmark it. And we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so here we've got our machine running. And uh, you can see here it had a score of 1484. Uh, and uh, most notably, the disk uh, was 759 meg. So let's call that 800 for a nice easy number. Uh, and that was with the original uh, little SK Hynix 256 gig 2230 NVMe Class 35 disc uh, in an i5 system uh, that uh, we tested uh, just a week or so ago. We changed that to this uh, sent to this um, Crucial P1, and you can see that it bumped the score up a moderate amount. But in particular, the write uh, score, uh, the write speed, uh, roughly doubled. Actually, slightly more than doubled. Uh, so let's take a look at what uh, this machine will do. Uh, let's click Start Tests, and while we're doing that. Uh, I'm going to bring up the task manager so we can see the CPUs. There they are. And by the way, this is just a great way to kill a test, but I just wanted to show you that there are the eight full cores there. And this particular unit has 32 gig of RAM. You can also see that at the bottom. Now I'm not gonna waste your time going through the rest of this. So what we will do is I'll speed this up. Okay, so the test is completed, and this came back with a score of 1800, which is a nice improvement over 1527. You can see the uh, speed on the disk is 1600 uh, writes uh, and 1200 read, which is just fine on that crucial P1 one terabyte disk. As we've noted in other videos and on our site, urtech.ca, if you are looking at the crucial P1, make sure you choose the one terabyte and not the 512 because that's much faster. Uh, in the one terabyte uh, uh, configuration. So let's take a look at uh, CPU score here. Here the CPU came in at uh, 1071 uh, and you can see here that the uh, floating ops, integer ops, and hash ops um, are all faster which is not much of a surprise given the extra cores. In particular the integer ops is the big bump here, right? For, so from uh, 120 to 165 and um, the floating ops is a nice, well, the floating ops not a bad improvement as well. Anyway, so the uh, the eight cores does make a difference, and um, at least in benchmarks, and it certainly does in our practical day-to-day -day use as well. Okay, so let's take a look at how this compares to uh, previous models. Uh, as we showed, uh, the 5070 from uh, this year that was an i5, uh, which you can see right here. Uh, is um, substantially less as far as the CPU goes, but fine for everything else, as we've talked about. Uh, the 5050, which was last year's model, again, it's really not a best, a very good comparison because this uh, new box is an i7, ninth generation, but uh, it does give you some sort of an idea as to where the performance differences are. So let's scroll this all the way back to say, probably a more common box that people will be comparing it to, which is the 9020 or the 9010s. Um, so let's take a look at that. Um, it, they're just a little more likely to be upgrading from an older box like that than to uh, than from a, a 50-50. Or 90-20, you can see here the overall score, it's about twice as fast, more than twice as fast as it is on the, uh, uh, as it was in the 90-10. It's no surprise that the disc is radically faster as these were commodity grade uh, SSDs, uh, but that were on the SATA bus versus the commodity grade SSD that we now have on the M2 uh, connector with a NVMe PCI uh, Express uh, connection. So much, much, much faster as you can see here. And uh, But the CPU is also just drastically faster. So the score of 578 here 
versus a score of uh, you know 1071. So I think it's fair to say that this i7 from today uh, is twice as fast as the i5 from three to four years ago, depending on you know which model you ended up buying. If you have any questions, please get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thank you. Bye bye.